Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Um, for, thank you for joining us for another uh, fun-filled uh, Climate Emergency Centre Network um, Zoom presentation, or we're uh, rebranding them as webinars now, I think. Um, so we've got an exciting one tonight. Um, uh, Jules from Community Climate Action and uh, Dan Hooper, uh, AKA Swampy, has, has come, an old friend from the 90s tree protest, to tell us about the Climate Majority Project, which, uh, uh, trying to sum it up in a sentence or so, I'm sure they'll tell you more, it is about getting the majority of uh, the population involved with, with taking action on, on the climate in some form or another. Um, check out climatemajorityproject.com. But without too much further ado, should we come over to Jules? Are you with us? Do you want to uh, chat for a bit, Jules? On his way yeah. to see the garden party. Over. I'm right here, Phoenix. Can you hear me okay? Yep, loud and clear. And I pulled over on my journey as well. I'm on the way to a festival secret garden party and then Harlequin Fair and then Green Gathering to talk about community climate action. And so I pulled over a minute because this is really important. There's 39 people on this call. And I appreciate probably most of you have come to hear from Dan from Swampy because uh, you know, he's been there and done that. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit first uh, about the Climate Majority Project and also about Extinction Rebellion a little bit civil disobedience and what we're doing in community climate action. So I've been in the eye of the storm with Extinction Rebellion since the start. You know, I sat down on the bridges in 2018. Subsequently, I've gone on to be coordinator of many teams and um, in the political circle. Um, can I talk louder? Um, I'm currently on Bluetooth. I can turn my Bluetooth off and just try a speaker if that helps. Should I do that? What? The sound's horrible. The sound just doesn't work here. Okay, give me a moment. I can hear you, Jules, okay. But yeah, turn your video off, maybe. Might boost sound. Over. Keep going. How about that? Is that better? I can hear you okay. I'm getting Much thumbs better. up. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. Let's say much better. Cool. Okay, I've turned I've turned my Bluetooth off because um, I don't need it now. I'm not driving, you know. Um, so I've been in the eye of the storm with Extinction Rebellion since the beginning. I've been in the political circle. Um, I've been in the ops team for a number of years, um, and I've tried my best to get arrested several times but failed. So I've never actually been arrested. A really good example of that was the red-handed action where we were all put, planning our hands on the on the ministries and statues and people were getting dragged away, you know. And I walked ahead of the crowd and I, I went and tagged the treasury with in front of six policemen and three security guards and expected to be rugby tackled to the ground. And, and they just did nothing and looked at me. So I just got a selfie and a picture of my handprint on the treasury. And because it was the red-handed action, the idea was that we went and handed ourselves in because, you know, so um, <laughs> you, you can sort that out for me. I've tried a lot and actually I don't want to be arrested right now. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, because, you know, I went and handed myself in at Charing Cross and showed them the picture and said, please arrest me. And they didn't. I've been lying. I, you know, I, I, lay, I laid in the road when we took Trafalgar Square. I organized the rally in Trafalgar Square in 2019 when they declared a section 14 and said we couldn't assemble. And I assembled 5,000 people and said, arrest, arrest me. You know, I, I organized, I ceremoniously organized George Monbiot and Jonathan Barley getting arrested. Um, you know, so anyway, I've tried, anyway, I've, I've, I've been there and done that with XR. That's, that's kind of one, the point that I'm making. And my path, I'm on a different path now. I'm moving from a place of complaint to action because the premise with um, Extinction Rebellion for me, the theory of change was always that it was mass civil disobedience. And if we all down tools tomorrow, and uh, then the world would change, but that's not happening. And I can't see any clear strategy within Extinction Rebellion to do that. And I think it's had its time. And so what next? You know, I've talked, you know, Gail Bradbrook's discussed this, other founders like Stuart Basden and Simon have discussed this. Obviously, um, Roger Hallam has gone on to do his, you know, other things. And, you know, XR also have a bad reputation in certain quarters because of actions like the tube, like Canning Town. You know, we specifically requested that didn't happen through a process of deliberative democracy. 
that wasn't listened to. And if we don't do what you say on the tin, then how can we ask society to be governed by a binding citizens assembly on climate? So I don't really don't feel the walk the walk. And also I feel that, um, you know, there's a very small executive in XR making the choices right now. Um, and that's what led me to leave because I'm a firm believer in participatory processes and deliberative democracy. So some time ago, um, you know, and a, first, first of all, first of all, let me be clear that I, I absolutely believe that civil disobedience is required. I think it is a logical response to our government's inaction on climate change. And I want to salute the bravery of those that can, that do and continue to get arrested for this cause. Because Marcus, for instance, who's in prison for three years, is, is a friend of mine. And he shouldn't be in prison. He should be at the festivals I'm going to. Because he's the nicest, friendliest music playing hippie you'll, you'll ever meet. You know, so I have to salute the bravery and courage of those that do, and it's not a zero sum game. However, 80% of people don't think the government's doing enough on, on the climate crisis, and 60% of people want to take action, but don't know what to do. And those 60% of people are, are probably not going to go and get arrested. So what avenue do they have to express their collective will or their agency for action. And that's where the Climate Majority Project comes in, because we're aiming to be a broad church, including everyone from, you know, from swampy and committed activists. And I'd include myself in that bracket of committed activists in terms of having spent four years dedicating my life to Extinction Rebellion, to people like Lord Deben, the uh, chair of the Climate Change Committee, who's just, who's just leaving. Um, so the way that that's manifesting itself for me and is community climate action. And that's a process of um, participatory workshops, working in conjunction with our parish, district and county councils to meet their respective targets. It's their policy. So it's really hard for them to vote against. So we've gone to our parish council and I've joined the parish council, a parish council as well. But we've gone to three parish councils and we said, can we write a community climate action plan? And I asked them to vote and put it in the minutes and the vote was yes. So we now have, we've written a community climate action plan. Um, do I mean David Meller? That was the question. No, I mean John Gummer, Lord Deben. Yeah. I hope that answers the question. Yes, yeah, sorry. The chair of the Climate Change Committee. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so where we are, we've, we've got, th got our three parishes together um, and we've written, a, written a a, our community climate action plan. And the really important thing is from the community. And it's a series of participatory workshops culminating in a people's assembly, which is deliberative democracy to make sure we're on the right track and really ask the question, how, how are we gonna do this together? And that process is, encompasses, you know, a variety of things. So first of all, stakeholder mapping, you know, who's around us? Who are the institutions? You know, who do we need to talk to? Who do we need to be involved? Of course, our residents, but what other institutions? So for us, that means our universities like UEA, Suffolk University, West Suffolk College. And the second bit, which is really, really important, is focusing on shared our shared values, like I'm a paid up member of the Labour Party, I've been a member of the Green Party, probably campaigned for both depending on, you know, depending on quite where I am. In East Anglia, where I am, it's blue through and through. So everybody I'm working with is a Conservative. So I'm not going to argue about ideology. I'm going to ask what values do we share? And the top three values that we came out with were sharing, kindness and green spaces. So we all agree that's what we want. Um, the next three, I think, were clean air, clean water, and, and a healthy, healthy soil and a livable planet. So we all agree these things. So there's, there's more that connects than divides. Then we ask, well, what does, what does that look like? What does health and well-being look like in our local area for our community? And we map it, we map it out, you know. 
And then we asked, well, what themes do we want to work on? And I tell you what, I had to sit up my hands during this process because I can write the plan tomorrow, you know. I've got a pretty good handle on these things. I've got a lot of expertise and experts to draw on. But what's most important is these ideas and actions and participation come from the community. So we have the chairs of our parish council, uh, there are parish councillors there, our district councillors there, county councillors there. We had our, our community there. And the themes that came out of the discussion were transport, housing, energy, food, and nature and biodiversity. So those are our five themes for our plan. And the third session was then what practical projects do we want to take forward to further those objectives in terms of that map of health and well-being that we want to accomplish with the objective of decarbonizing and hitting zero, not net zero, but zero. Um, and um, sorry, I'm seeing messages pop on my, on my screen slightly, slightly distracted, but so that, so we want to hit zero and we want to increase biodiversity along the way. So we've written a plan. That's the most important thing. And then we're going to go and enact our plan. And I can talk at length about where the money comes from to do that in terms of capital infrastructure um, investments. I'll probably do that during a Q&A if anyone's interested. Um, but what's really successful here is this small project has now ballooned. We've gone from three to six to nine to 10. With, um, I'm, with the launch of the Climate Majority Project, I'm receiving emails from the US, from Europe, from Africa. And how do we connect our communities from a global to uh, a local to a global basis to actually write and enact our own plan? Because I absolutely believe the government is not coming to save us anytime soon. And COP is a failure. You know, it's being chaired by the, by the president of a fossil fuel company. And even if we get a change of government tomorrow, you know, there's, there's, there's powerful lobbies that will make it very difficult for the government to enact everything that we want to see. And it's perfectly within our power Right now, we have the power, people have the power, power to the people. We absolutely have the power to go and do right now. There is nothing stopping us. So we're gonna go and insulate Britain, but we're not gonna do that by gluing our hands to the road. We're gonna go and do that by forming community benefit societies that insulate homes. Now this, that's a 65 billion market opportunity just to hit the government's own legislative targets. There is 130 trillion in capital waiting for a home, according to Mark Carney. So we've come up with some ways to connect that patient capital to these infrastructure projects. So for, for, as communities, we can just go and we can just go and do. And that's kind of manifesting itself in East Anglia, where I live, with our community farm and our pub, and our, we've set up a CBS, and we're and we're we're delivering renewable energy, and we're insulating homes, we're increasing and mapping biodiversity. And we've, we've got lots of working groups doing that. And that's the 60% that might never join XR and might never join themselves to the road. So in conclusion, I would describe this as a, as, as a triangle. It's not a zero sum game. It's not a choice between civil disobedience or not. If you can afford to get arrested or commit acts of civil disobedience, go and do it. Absolutely go and do it. But you know, if you imagine it is a triangle with just up oil and, and XR as the tip of the spear. XR specifically don't talk about solutions because they don't want to prefigure a citizen's assembly. So the other corners of those pyramid, and I wish I was on my laptop so I could show you the diagram. The other corners of those pyramid are community action and deliberative democracy. And we fill the void that's left behind the actions of just stop oil, because if we don't fill it, then the Daily Mail fills it with a hair shirt future. So, we're, so at the Climate Majority Project, we are absolutely supporting the setup of spaces to engage with the community. And the Climate Emergency Network is a really good example of that. And we are incubating organizations like Community Climate Action, so we can go and scale, and we can scale around the country. And we've got groups from Kendall to Bromsgrove to Brighton to Wales, you know, to Islington setting up right now to go and do exactly the same thing. Um, because, you know, this has to, because politics is a participatory sport. You know, it's not a spectator sport. So I'd absolutely encourage you all to get involved. And I'd really be delighted if any of you are really interested in, in actually going and doing because if the government says tomorrow, okay, let's do it, we've got to go do it anyway. So let's start. Let's start now. Ah.
<laughs> there we go. That's 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 a bit about uh, the Climate Majority Project and um, Community Climate Action. Lovely. Thanks very much, Jules. Thanks for beaming in from on the road to Secret Garden. Uh, have a great time. So we'll come over to an old friend from the uh, 90s uh, tree protest. Um, used to hang out some trees and tunnels back in the day. Uh, uh, Dan Hooper, the artist uh, known as, uh, uh, formerly known as our activist, known as Swampy. How are you doing, Dan? Lovely. Thank you so much for coming. Over to you. Hi, yeah. Over. Okay, yeah. Um, right, well, yeah. Uh, I probably don't need much of an introduction. Um, obviously, did a lot of road protesting and uh, other environmental protesting in the 90s. Uh, uh, famously, the Fairmore Tunnel, but you know, other sites were available um, and tunnels were available. Um, and um, yeah, and then uh, more recently with um, Extinction Rebellion a bit um, and uh, uh, Stop HS2, which was more up my street, I suppose, um, <laughs> which was, uh, you know, obviously the two billion. 200 billion pound project, which, um, you know, uh, and uh, I did manage to get arrested far too many times, unfortunately, not not trying. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I've never tried, um, but it uh, seems to happen. Um, so, uh, you know, still uh, still going through courts from that one um, and um, doing a community payback as they call it um yeah um so anyway yeah but i i, I was uh, more recently or fairly recently you know listening to um uh, uh rupert uh talking about the climate majority project and i just happened to agree with a lot of what he said um in in that so um i got in touch um and just said you know oh brilliant you know well done sort of thing and uh Rupert sort of drew me in um <laughs> so uh yeah that's uh you know and basically you know in my opinion you know I mean a lot of what needed said has been said but uh, you know it's about bringing uh, you know bringing it all together to make the change because uh you know as I said already the majority of people know you know Something. and want to do the right thing you know they know how desperate it's getting you know you'd have to be a conspiracy theorist really to not think that although some conspiracies might be right um <laughs> but not that one um and uh you know the um yeah it's it's about um trying to make the change changes and cutting across the political divide um to make the uh you know the proper changes not the ones that uh you know not making loads of uh perhaps small nuclear power stations all over the country um which is <laughs> uh yeah but anyway and and you know obviously not everyone can do direct action which is one of the points someone said oh you know how's how's it different from x star well you know the the XR brand's not going to draw most people in these days, you know, or, or probably wouldn't, you know, ever because it, it, it's uh, uh, not even a, you know, it's a civil di disobedience, which, you know, there's a, a definite place for it. And I think Extinction Rebellion's done an amazing job and still is doing an amazing job. And so, you know, um, you know, there was a thing at uh, Fossey Fran, uh, less than two weeks ago wasn't there where they blocked the entrance who blocked it once myself for about um 18 years ago or something like that and it's it's just one road that comes in from what i remember so uh you know it's, uh, yeah excellent um to be to have done that um and some of the people in this meeting were there um but yeah, as I say, you know, uh, uh, you know, direct action and civil disobedience isn't going to draw the majority of the country in like it is, you know, we might and, you know, if, if it did. But, um, we, you know, oh, yes. we know that this, 
Sorry, my rambling. Swampy. Do you remember Swampy? <laughs> I'm just going to mute everyone. Carry on, Dan. Oh, I'll you. carry on. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, we know. Um... Oh, you have to unmute now, Dan. Is it unmute, mute you as well? One sec. Sorry, there we are. Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. It's not instead of direct action. Um, you know, I, I I totally feel that there's a place for direct action for uh, many people, and we need to. I think we need still need to hold uh, companies to account, uh, which is my style of doing things, really. You know, and um, you know, maybe the message still needs to be driven home. So um, that's my opinion. It's not everyone's opinion. You know, it's not going to be everyone's opinion in the group. Um, I was recently made the mistake of going on GB News. Um, which uh, I didn't realise quite how um, right wing they were. Um, and, uh, you know, but one thing it, it did teach me a little bit, which, you know, I, I found myself agreeing with uh, in in some ways is, you know, they were talking about people can't afford. How, how can people do anything about direct, yeah, about, um, cli you know, the climate emergency when, you know, people have no money, you know, people can't af just can't afford this, you know. And, um, you know, the, the answer I should have come up with if I was cleverer and quicker, uh, you know, is that people, you know, we shouldn't need, it shouldn't cost anymore because we actually should be cutting back. That's the point of it, isn't it? You know, in my opinion, you know, the government wants to, be, you know, have the narrative that we need to spend more to do this. You know, we need to buy cars we need to do this you know and and you know obviously that that's the opposite way that we should be going this should be saving us money because we're flying less because we're repairing our own clothes because we're driving less you know we, we should be able to spend less through doing this you know so it, it's it's a total misnomer to say we can't afford it um and uh, I, you know, obviously, I'm preaching to the converted here a little, um, but uh, you know, it's about working with the community. That's one of the main things which we obviously was talked about a lot. And I think this is where um, the uh, climate centres are, you know, fantastic. And I, you know, I really want to get involved in the one in Carmarthen. So it's good that um, obviously I know most of the Carmarthen people who are on this call because I've um, worked with them. Um, but uh, not. I don't think I know Jim, but, uh, you know, look forward to getting to know everyone. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, that that's, you know, encouraging people, make, you know, obviously to encourage people to go green easier. Um, working with farmers is something I, I'm particularly interested in um, because uh, the feedback I get um from the farming community um is that they feel quite attacked with the the sort of rhetoric that comes out that you know i i think we need to change the language because the language or what they're getting is you need you need to use all your you lose all your land to forest and um which you know sometimes involves uh you know, <laughs> you, know you, you know huge huge bits of land are being bought up by sorry. big companies uh hello uh sorry dan i'm just about i'm just about to start driving again but i just wanted to interrupt a moment if i may before yeah. i start driving up because i've just started a job as a, a consultant with the farming and wildlife advisory group and yeah. i just completely agree with you that farmers know what's happening with the climate they are changing the crops that they are planting they are struggling with water they see they feel it they know it intrinsically and they're they're the squeezed middle between big ag and 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 the supermarkets mm. and they're seen as the bad boys and you know they're not they really are advocates and our champions and our friends if we just take a moment to talk to them say hello say i'm your neighbor say hi you know there are there are advocates and champions and and they just get the finger pointed like you're 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 doing terrible terrible things 
they've done it for generations and they just want to know they just want to know they just want to know how to how to how to do it better so i just wanted to so before i start driving again i just wanted to compare and say yes go and make friends with your farmers know where your food comes from you know um they're they're they're, 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 they're on our side they're part of that majority thanks Dan. nice 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 one jules i think that's the point how do we you know get the majority of the population into getting involved you know not everyone wants to get yeah. arrested, but there's thousands of good projects all over yeah. the country fully operating how do we bring them together emergencies well, that, that's... Their way together, i mean you know? On the farm, front, like like Jules was just saying, you know, they, 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 the farmers know, you know, they, they're affected by this more than anyone. You know, they, they know that their crops are often failing because the weather's weird, you know, and um, they, you know, majority, I think the majority of farmers want to do the right thing and they're feeding the country so you know we can't do without farmers you know um so yeah absolutely we need to change change the language there and maybe uh you know we, if we could set up um you know, or get to act into agricultural shows as a climate majority project you know would be um you know a, a nice way to to connect and work with farmers um, to, uh, you know, because the ones I know, they, they want to do the right thing, definitely. And soil health is uh, one of the main ways that we, you know, you don't like the so much carbons stored in soil. So if you've got unhealthy soil, there's, you know, that that's just almost as bad as not having enough trees and also you know how much of the far some of the farm could be you know maybe would be wilded but not you know not the majority of it if the money's there and uh, the farm needs to be viable um and then i put industry here and i've just put not my strong point because i don't want to slag off industry too much um <laughs> I, I just you know i find it hard there because i think um there's, there's a, a point that, that a lot of people are cashing in on green uh, on green things and a lot of green incentives in my opinion aren't actually green at all it's all about making money with uh, you know electric cars is uh, you know it's part of the solution perhaps but uh you know it's certainly not the main solution um you know and on a government level of course you know um which you know i don't think we can wait as was said earlier i don't think we can wait for um, the government to uh, do anything because they're bloody not up for it, are they? Unless, you know, unless they think that they're not going to get voted in in the next election. But, you know, public, I mean, you know, if you think about the road protest in the 90s, you know, if they would have put all that money and effort into the public transport at the time, we could, you know, we might have, a, we might have had a really good, um network of public transport and instead of you know spending 200 billion on hs2 if they'd have actually decided to make our public transport free and usable then you know we'd be in a better place now um you know it's this total um misnomer to try and you know build more roads which are building more roads now as well you know we all know this but you know, it's just then going, oh, it's okay because it's all electric cars that'll be on it soon. So don't worry, you know, we haven't got enough electric. We haven't got enough lithium. We have, you know, it's just ridiculous, really. Um, anyway. Exactly. If, they put, if they put the 409 billion from HS2 into public transport, into the rest of the buses, rails, you know, and, and transport network, mm. Germany's made it nearly free. I think it was like nine euros to go anywhere in, in, um, in Germany, and that then reduces, you know, the, the whole pollution uh, factors. Mm -hmm. um, we're coming towards uh, sort of tail end. I was thinking, um, Dan, do we want to maybe take a few questions and stuff? Anything from around the uh, University Challenge panel? Yeah, do you want to? Um, any, anything else you just want to round up with Climate Majority Project? Anything you want to sum up with? And then uh, we'll see if anyone wants to ask you or Jules, if you're still with us, I think. Um, any questions? Over. Um, um, I don't. I don't. Okay. 
Shall we ask for questions, guys? If you want to use the little um, down the bottom, you can use reactions, the little reactions button, and you can place a hand up, and then if I'm facilitating, I can tell who's one, two, and three. So quick off the mark is the Swindon, um, Swindon University Challenge Panel with Julian. Uh, you have a question? Over. Thanks, Phoenix. Uh, I don't know if you're still able to answer yours, but um, we're also thinking along the lines of what we can get parish councils doing. And I just wondered if you had any good examples or if anyone else can just briefly quote any good examples of the sorts of things that the parish councils are doing well. Um, well, that's probably a question for me because I am a parish councillor. And what parish councillors doing well? Well, first of all, they're showing a real interest. Not all of them, but the chief executives of, I'm doing a webinar to the chief executives of Suffolk, uh, Norfolk, Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire, Hertfordshire and Essex about community climate action planning. Um, there is municipal investment bonds available via public road loan board borrowing for green infrastructure for parish councils. Uh, parish councils are doing biodiversity mapping as well, which is really, which is really important. Um, and you know, our green cluster is not just parish based, council based, it's community based, you know. But we've been joined by our farmers, and what Dan said about our soil is super important. Um, because there's a thing called Project Drawdown, which is about how we return to a place of safety, and that's about what we plant and where and how much carbon it sequesters into our soil. So, our soil health is of paramount importance, and it's the biggest carbon sink we've got left. Um, it's the biggest carbon sink we've got left. The oceans are full, the air is full. If we want to sequester that carbon, then we need to do it by advancing into our soil. Um, so we're having really fruitful conversations with the chief executives of the Association of Local Councils, both regionally and nationally. And the National Association of Local Councils wants to syndicate our community climate action planning through their network of 10,000 town and parish councils. So they're very receptive. And the biggest thing, the biggest thing I hear from parish councils uh, is, is what, what do we do? And, and what's a good, what, you know, where, 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 where's a good template? Where's the work before, where's a plan? So that's the kind of content and the delivery that we're, we're, we're providing for them at the moment. Okay. And, and I would advise you to go to your go to your parish meetings and make and also make friends and just know the names of every parish councillor, know who the chair is. Um, get it in the minutes. Stand up and say the United Nations has declared code, code red for humanity. You know, tell them what the IPCC says. Get them as a member of the public, get them to record that in the minutes of the meeting. And I've got to sign off now because I'm at a security check. <laughs> I'll try and answer <laughs> Jules, thank you so much for coming. Uh, really good to see 41 uh, people coming to tune in today. Uh, get in touch with the Climate Majority Project with Jules Swampy, Rupert, and there's a whole host of people. We really need to, you know, mobilise the, 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 the majority to take some kind of action in their, in their communities in whatever way you can. And climate emergency centres and uh, community climate action plans are a good way to do it. Thank you very much, Jules. Big love. Uh, over to uh, Fiona. In yeah, um, I was just Googling the um, CMP website to, for a bit more information and I was sort of thinking, well, what, what is their unique in their strategy um, in trying to reach, you know, the, the parts of the population that aren't engaged, aren't interested, too busy, whatever, you know, that, that, that stands out from um, other attempts, XR's, you know, strategies. We've talked about parish councils that you know, yeah, their, their grassroots um, don't have a lot of power, um, sort of really. We're here in Durham, we are working with the, um, the Council on the Climate Emergency Response Plan. But is there, I, I, perhaps if I re read more, and I will read more on the CMP website, how are they actually going to engage these people? Um, is there a strategy that I haven't come across yet? I don't know if uh, Swampy can answer that <laughs> well i'll try i mean it, it, it's um i think it's already reaching out to quite a diverse range of people um i think the main difference between 
XR, XR reaching out to people and uh, the client majority project is that it's not XR. So, you know, people see, see XR and XR might be doing a similar thing, reaching out to people, trying to, you know, bring people together. But people see Extinction Rebellion as a, 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 a civil disobedience thing, which it, which it is. Um, and so this is just a different type of thing. It's not civil, civil disobedience. It's about mm. finding ways of um, tackling the problem. I but, guess, uh, uh, you know, it's education, isn't it? And talks mm. like this. I mean, that that there. I think if you look at um, big campaigns that have, you know, got into the public eye, like XR, and history shows us that they do tend to fragment and kind of weaken. So I'm just hoping that there is some, I know Rupert um, will have given this a lot of thought, but that there is some special tactical strategy he's got to really pick up these people, the majority. Um, but we're, perhaps all will be revealed in time. Um, just to bung in that, you know, it's a new project. I went to the first one in Liverpool, Climate Majority Project, and uh, there's a lot of people from a big, wide diversity of groups and, and, and aspects of society, and it's still an evolving project. Sorry. So it's been involved and, and help with that yeah, project. Yeah, sorry, Phoenix. Can I, can I just Tim? interject? One, one thing I did here while I was talking to security and trying to find the entrance, which is quite, oh, a, quite a tricky, quite a tricky thing. Um, one thing I did here is the parish councils don't have much power. That's not true. Parish councils have a huge amount of power. Interesting. My friend's been saying that for years. He's uh, a climate yeah, I mean, resilience plan. Details about that. He was saying in Dorset, his, his local and parish council were saying, if the climate problem gets really, really bad, the higher up councils are going to say you're on your own. You should have your resilient network set up. But... Oh, um, over to Tim uh, in sunny Lincoln, um, and then Deb's in Preston. Over. Am I on? Yeah. Yeah, hi. It's a bit funny because I'm on my phone, but yeah, I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've been tried working with our parish council. I call it the parish council that likes to say no, but perhaps I'm asking the wrong questions or asking them the wrong way. But I know, Jules, um, if you're still there, a lot of district councils, and we work closely with our district council, we're in Link I'm in Lincolnshire, um, it's North Kesteven. Um, They've got a climate action plan. Is your planning sort of built into that, or is it separate from these action plans councils have got, or does it complement them? Or it's probably quite a technical question, really, on that one. But I mean, I, I mean, as is a blue, you know, we've we've got we're blue as as you are in Suffolk and Norfolk. Um, but the the consensus of the of the of our council here is is you know pretty ambitious one of the probably one of the most ambitious climate action plans i've seen um talk about net zero rather than true zero but yeah just wondered how the technicalities of it a little bit if whether it's an extra or an add-on to their existing action plans that most councils have got at district level and and county level um, is jules still with us or is he going through uh, security closeness Jules, um, I, I would, I'm not sure he's still with us, uh, Tim. I would say contact Jules direct. He's been doing a lot of work with the, the, the community climate action plans and apparently a whole load of councils have want to take on the model that they've got for local communities brainstorming uh, that. Uh, Tim, Let's come back in on that one as well. I mean, there is a vacancy on our parish council at the moment. So is this, is this sort of... <laughs> Where I go now, I don't know. Maybe. And I just say that I think, you know, um, it's really important to look at your um, council's climate emergency response plan and and translate it into, you know, uh, a version that the parish council can, you know, get involved in it with not sort of work against it because, um, you know, they want to reach out to communities and um, they've got a obligation, haven't they, to engage with, um the people in their area so yeah i mean you can see these plans on any council website um and and parish councils i don't know how much they know uh, about them and and are sort of trying to follow through on them but there should be that you know down flow of information and action shouldn't there mm. 
Um, Thank you. <laughs> nice, Fiona. Um, uh, over to Debs. Um, as you know, Phoenix, I do a lot with the councils, and I think really we need to be making friends with our local councillors and getting them involved with the climate centres and hubs and our spaces as much as possible because at the end of the day, they are the local councillors, they are our neighbours, they should be our friends and they're the ones who are making the power and the decisions in council, but it's hard for it's as hard for them sometimes as us. They they're as much like need a bit of guidance and I think that's like where climate emergency centres play a part and it's it's like the climate majority projects. It is like climate emergency centres really is the same, isn't it? We're doing like doing the reaching out and not doing the naughty stuff in London and stuff. <laughs> so really we've been doing that for a for a while, haven't we? Like doing that reaching out and getting the people who are not usually don't want to be in Extinction Rebellion and and that. And as you say, it's finding the common ground. I, I get loads of people in the like people who are born again Christians or like climate change deniers, but it's finding the bit where you do agree on them. People still, even if the climate change deniers, they still want to be around nature and all of that. So it's getting the bits what they do like, isn't it? And trying to like make and come round to us. So that's yeah. <laughs> and thanks, Swampy. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Devs. Nice. Uh, just to bung my two pen of for just for a minute or two, just to give you a bit of info. And we'll come over to Chris uh, in, in Lynn Lithgow. And uh, I hope people are right to carry on for another five, 10 minutes uh, because, you know, it's an interesting subject. Um, What's to say, really, you know, I've been active for 30 years setting up eco community centres since the 1992 Rio Earth Summit, and that's the knowledge that went into the Climate Emergency Centre Handbook. Uh, it's really, really important that we, you know, get this information out there. I have seen movements come together, new projects, hundreds of, you know, new people and projects and friends and things linked by having a physical building. When we're all off in our separate front rooms and whatever it is, um, people get a bit isolated or disconnected. And by having a physical space for a cafe to reach out, make new friends, link these groups together, so much happens. People set up new projects, all sorts. And, you know, it's not about, we need to try a whole broad range of strategies and tactics. You know, I've always been in favor of direct action and, and taking that and, and uh, there's an old expression about stopping the destruction with one hand, taking direct action and protesting, but with the other hand, you have to give as much energy or more energy or twice as much energy into the future and the world you want to see. And that's partly what climate emergency centers are about, is focusing on solutions, getting that green, what was already seen as alternative and renewable energy and pump up stuff, whatever it is, out onto the high street to Joe and Jane Public who are coming past, coming home from work or with the pushchair or whatever, you know, and talking about the solutions and the futures and the projects that we want to see, it's absolutely critical. And I suppose with the, you know, I, I've, I've tried to engage with councils over the years. We've had some successes and some not. It's about building relationships. We've now got relationships with several uh, property owners and developers that are starting to offer us buildings around the country. So do get in touch with climateec at gmail.com if you're, if you're you know, looking to get a space or setting a team up. Uh, we can help you negotiate leases and various things. You know, we need these spaces really urgently. And by having these spaces, it can bring together more of the majority of people who are really, really concerned about what's going on. And if we can activate that silent majority to take some action, you know, I, I once heard something, it takes 10 people to do all the extra work and support for one person to be arrested. You know, you can do the nine other jobs keeping these centres going and doing things and transporting food and whatever it is. So do whatever you can, wherever you can, to take action, uh, whether that's as part of a climate silent majority, working on community projects or taking direct action or setting up one of these centres. It's all valuable and important work. Um, OK, uh, having said that, little blah, um, over, over to Chris uh, Cook in uh, Lynn Lithgow. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Phoenix. Um, we were saying when we just started that I hadn't seen Phoenix for like 20 years, Duffnell Park it was. Um, so, uh, and he's, he's, he's still going. Respect, man, absolutely. Now, I'm, I'm, what I, I'm a chair of a local council here in Linlithgow, the um, Linlithgow um, 
and Linlithgow Bridge Community Council just just taken power. We've got a thousand pounds budget a year and the statutory right to be ignored by West Lothian Council, right? But um, we we actually do have democratic legitimacy, and that's the key point. And we also have an extremely um, vibrant and active civil population. Now, I put together, I put a link to it on the um, in the chat, a project called the Linlithgow Natural Grid, not National Grid, Natural Grid. And um, the aim of that project, this is a decade ago, it took a few years, um, was energy independence for Linlithgow. Simple aim, independence, right? I just stood up in the local borough hall here, said, can anybody hear that noise? And they said, what noise? There's a hum. And I said, that's the sound of six million quid a year going out of Linlithgow, I said. The shapes and oligarchs, right? And that was when the price was like a third of what it is now. Now, the reason we're going to win is this, right? The more expensive fossil fuel gets, the more profit there is in saving it, right? It's that simple. That's got nothing to do with climate. That's agnostic. If you actually save fossil fuel, you're going to make money where there's, there's brass, okay? And if you save fossil fuel, you're saving CO2. I happen to understand markets. I was a director of a global exchange, but I'm better now. And I met Phoenix along the way, a long story. And I, I know Jules pretty well. We, we've been working together. You know, I've been supporting the work that he's doing, brilliant work down there in North, Norfolk and Suffolk border. There aren't many people, <clears throat> I'm not being big headed, it's just my experience, with a better understanding of legal and financial structures and markets and how to get things financed than I've got. And I spent the last 10 years prototyping and working on simple, bottom-up, resilient, networked institutions. And I've come to the conclusion that councils are incredibly important, as Jules says. So, pleasure to meet you all. I'm not going to say any more, just introducing myself. Great to be back with Phoenix, and we're in touch, because I'm sure we'll, we'll make good, good anarchism between us, you know. <laughs> Am I insulting you there, Phoenix? I don't know. But um, uh, no, no, sir. I, I, I try and work with all different uh, groups, movements, <laughs> and perspectives. I'm a rainbow uh, warrior. It's a That's pleasure to meet uh, Swampy as well. You know, a legend in his own tree tops. You know, I mean, fantastic Swampy. Anyway, I'll, I'll be quiet at that point. I just wanted to say it is possible. Not only is it possible to get this thing done, it's actually the best possible economic activity we can actually do we've just got to get the you know the right technologies in the right way and uh and, and start you know start bottom up not just doing this in Lanithco by the way we've got projects in the Pacific um a little island <clears throat> out there but anybody interested just ping me and um lots of material um anyway I'll stop at that <clears throat> Thank you, Chris. Lovely to see you again. Please make sure everyone you've given us an email, a direct message. We're I've already pinged you. you. I've already pinged you. Lovely. And I see Mark Dodds there as well. Oh, pub partnerships opening up. Um, uh, if We're going to continue to about 10 past if, if people are OK with that. Um, you know, maybe a little longer if you're really, really keen. Um, we usually stay tight now, but it's an interesting subject tonight. Coming over to... Um, uh, I've put the uh, updated version of the handbook in the chat and the Telegram link if you want to join that, or there's a WhatsApp group. Over to Mel Price in sunny Swansea, and then Gordon in Greenwich. Over. Thanks, Phoenix. Um, just talking about climate emergency centres, it seems to me that an ideal place would be in, in community centres. I was just wondering if there's any examples of having climate emergency, emergency centres within community centres, because it, it seems that we're that would be have a natural draw of people from the community. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. Just to quickly say, you know, uh, some of these centres are all new. They get given by council or private developers, but there are existing groups that have joined the network, like the Northampton uh, Umbrella Centre. Uh, there's another group, up, I think, up in York. There's a Brighton Peace Centre. Want to, they've been going for like 20, 30 years. They want to join and be a node on the network as a climate emergency centre. You can work with centres that are already there. The idea is to encourage more empty buildings to be used for, you know, a, a number of different projects, uh, shall we say, or, you know, build an infrastructure. You can have a shop on the high street, a warehouse, community centre. There's so many empties we should be using 
Um, but yeah, it's a good point. Uh, Gordon? Uh, just uh, back in what uh, Chris has been saying, which is actually very, very refreshing. Um, I haven't even seen it from this point of view before. But um, our big enemy with government is, of course, for those lobby groups and the billionaires. They're not all that interested in parish councils, are they? So we can get a foot in the door very, very quickly by, by working from the bottom up, working with the community. That's all I had to say. Yeah. They're the dinosaurs, we're the mammals eating their eggs. <laughs> Got to work with all levels of society. I protested in Parliament Square enough and then I realised you're actually allowed to go in and go and see them. All right, guys, any more for any more on a quick question or we'll go around for, should we go around for kind of feedback, check out a few lines just about what you, you think or anything you want to say? That's probably the best way to go. Uh, Tim Prince in Carmarthen, do you want to just uh, say check out or final comments over? Yeah, thanks for a very interesting evening. I'm learning a lot. I've got a lot of uh, tabs open on my uh, browser right now, and I'll have a look at um, some of the stuff that's been brought up today. It's been really interesting. Thanks ever so much. Great to see everybody on here. Cool. Uh, John, Oswestry? Uh, yeah, thanks very much, everyone. Um, I was just really interested in um, what kind of materials that the Climate Majority Project have got to give out and what actually happens if we want help in our centres and we phone them up and say um, we're looking to get involved with you. So yeah, I'd be interested to um, to find more out about that, but um, hopefully that will become clear once we get our centre up and we look into it a bit. Thanks a lot. Cool, lovely to see you, uh, John. Um, do save the chat, folks, the three dots down the bottom, so lots of good websites. Mel uh, Price in Swansea, I've got some other Swansea crew to link up with you. Over. Yeah, thanks all. Yeah, really interesting. Um, good to hear from everybody. I'd like to uh, find out more. Thanks very much. Alex D. Oh, I also have been a bit slow. Uh, good to see you all. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit late. Yeah, uh, lots going on. Seeds of the future, who's next? Lovely to see you, Alex. I didn't realise that, Alex. Uh, Alex, great. Nice to see you, Rose. Give me a bell. Um, J. Mark Dodds, uh, a pub somewhere you're mentioning? Over. Oh, yeah, you couldn't hear me. I was trying to unmute. Is it? Is the sound all right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so the the proposition. I've met Phoenix before. Hi, everyone. Uh, and I've done a bit of work with Chris Cook in the past. It's about um, if you. It, if you think of um, buying pubs all over Britain that are shut and engaging the local communities, raising capital through a national crowd fund um, into a social enterprise legal entity, then retrofitting the pubs to operate fossil fuel free, instigating local and regional supply chains, which will move towards sustainable closed loop, um, involve each pub's local community in a kind of DIY SOS in getting their pub back open and trading, but project managing all of that so the pubs, when they reopen, they're operated by people who are actually professionals at running the pubs and there's training built in to reskill the pub sector because it's completely de-skilled now. And then using those pubs as centres of resilience and community building um, where people can go and uh, commune and enjoy each other's company and then talk about all this kind of stuff face to face, reinvigorating the world's original social network in their, in their own neighbourhood. That's what that's about. And we've got a proof of principle pub coming up in Lincoln. Um, and like all of these things, it's very complicated because it involves a legal structure that enables that to happen. Um, and, and, and Britain is, is, is averse, is allergic to legal structures which kind of defeat capitalism. Uh, and um, anyway, it's, it's all live now. And that, there's a link there to an article in, in uh, Lincolnshire Live, I think it is. And we had a we had a conference at the University of Lincoln about the future of pubs on the 30th of June, which was pretty successful. Um, we're under resourced, but we're going to be um, we're going to be a combination of Brewdog, Weatherspoons, and John Lewis partnership, but really nice. <laughs> That's about <laughs> it. Okay, and everybody everybody in Britain will be invited to buy a share in the future of pubs, and it'll be it's likely to be a share will be ten pounds, and the object is to have a massive marketing exercise 
to attract millions of people to put a tenner in. So there's no risk to anybody. But if we get a million people to put 10 quid in, um, we got 10 million quid to start with. Right. So it de-risks the entire process and just makes pubs great again. Yeah. Save your local community centre pub. There's yeah. 28 pubs in a week. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Over to Mike's iPad. Uh, uh, Mike, are you with us? And just to say, I'm going to type in Jules's email into the chat. Save it if you need, if you want to contact him direct. Mike, are you with us? No, this is... no, Mike, Mike, hello. Okay. Can we go to Philip in Carmarthen? Yeah. Yeah, hey, thank you very much, everybody. I had to cut short the last meeting I was at by 30 minutes to come here, and I'm so pleased that I did that. Uh, so, yeah, fabulous to hear from all of you, and, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you at another one. Fantastic. Um, uh, I've just put Jules's email in the chat in a second. Check that out. Um, over to <laughs> Julian. Julian. Without me finish, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, brilliant. And um, I hope we can have a follow-up on climate uh, majority project with you know maybe with a few slides and things and a chance to ask some more questions about it. I thought that was really good. Thank you. Um, uh, in Wiltshire, the parish councils, the small in small places, are doing some particularly good stuff about you know getting you know uh, community energy stuff going, uh, insulation stuff, and stuff like that. So you know. I think it depends on the place how powerful they are. And I think they're a good place to start in towns as well, like Swindon. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Uh, so, yeah, thanks. Very timely. Um, that's what I'd say. Thanks, Phoenix. OK, I think Jane in West Wales has got to go. Jane, did you want to quick throw in before you're out? Do yeah, I no, just th thanks very much. That was really interesting. It's interesting, isn't it, that I think lots of us are coming to the same idea about the councils and the significance of the councils at the same time but it's really good to hear other people who are having some positive successes and some um, ideas about ways to make it spawn so thank you lovely um do give us your email go if you can folks john ranford future future friends john are you with us Okay, we'll come over to Dan. Do you want to? Uh, I mean, you, you can save yourself to the end, or do you want to? Do you want to say a quick something now? Uh, just you know, yeah, looking forward to linking in again with uh, the Carmarthen group, um, and uh, you know, getting the uh, helping with the cli the climate centre there, um, which could be is uh, going to be a lot of fun, I think. think um, yeah, that's all. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming, Dan. Really made it tonight. It was fantastic. And uh, from oh, the nice to see you again, Phoenix. Yeah, I'll see you at the green. I'll green see you gathering. at the green. And, and for, a, for a cup of tea and a slice of cake at the opening of the command <laughs> time emergency. Absolutely. Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a couple of beers after. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Bo. Really made it. Nice one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fiona, uh, Durham team. Oh, hi. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow night. Um, yeah, hoping that we can get something going in Durham. I think there's huge potential. And um, yeah, I'm just just in doing the promotion for tomorrow night's talk. I, I got to sort of look for the various green groups around in Durham and, you know, had no idea how many were out there. So, you know, a centre, if it can just bring these people together to, ha to you know, cooperate and be more effective, that's a, that's a win, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Look forward to seeing Durham. With anyone knows anyone near Durham, we're, we're doing a Zoom presentation for them about setting up a new centre and rugby next week. Just mm. basically, anyone mm. wants to book one of them, it's half an hour explaining it, half an hour Q and A. Uh, Debs in sunny Preston. I just want to say thank you to Julian and. Dan, it's like really interested and looking forward to seeing what comes with this new project. I don't know. I don't know who needs to go. <laughs> Phil, thank you, Dad. Speak up for all your hard work. Phil? Phil Ball, Phil, can you hear us? 
Phil of the Trojan Horse. <laughs> That's a funny story, that one. Phil, okay. Phil. We might be building a second Trojan Horse. Coming over to Catherine in Leeds. Oh, hello, sorry, just unmuting. Yeah, it's been really, really lovely to hear everybody's stories. Um, I met you in Leeds, Phoenix. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah, it's been good. We've got our local group, which has been quite busy now, and it feels really, really positive. A lot of people have come out to get involved, got lots going on. We've got this compost bin busy going, and tree planting and orchards, and it's just really positive. I'm just really delighted that so many people in my area that want to do things um i love seeing what jules is doing it looks really exciting we haven't got a pub involved yet but i kind of like that plan that sounds really, really cool um so yeah thanks for your time tonight i've really enjoyed it lovely uh rob in camden my old manor lovely let's get one going in camden oh thanks um yeah yeah i i found this really uh interesting uh informative uh, yeah looking forward to uh yeah, yeah, hopefully reaching out and learning more and trying to push Camden to get an emergency centre of their own. Brilliant. Link up, Rob. I want to chat to Camden team more. Let's find the empty buildings and get somewhere open. We, we can help negotiate at Space Generates Charity. Fantastic, yeah. We're being offered spaces around the country now, so do get in touch, folks. Um, Tim, have you been? Tim? Yeah, um, yeah, thanks for, for yeah, great great session again. Phoenix, I'm on my phone. Could you email me the chat? Because I can't take it on the phone. If you could email it to me, that'd be good. And uh, we can catch up for chat tomorrow. If we, uh, I miss your call today, but we can. All right, cool. Got time. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll put a summary uh, email out and we will send it to uh, the Telegram chat as well. Okay. Okay. There's Excellent. a WhatsApp for those who do WhatsApp. Lovely to see you again, bro. I'm not sure, but there might have been a link about a pub from Mark in Lincoln. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, he sent me he sent, he sent me an email already, so we're we're connected. Networking, networking up, Helen. Over, Helen. Okay, Helen, Helen. Uh, great to go up for the opening of the Leeds Centre. Not sure you're there at the moment, Helen. So we'll pop on. Thank you very much, everyone, for giving us an hour and 19 minutes of your very precious time. Uh, really appreciate Coming up to Bobby. Hi. Thank you all for a really inspiring yeah, discussion and Jules for all his information. And I will be getting in contact with Debbie because I'm close to Preston. And I have been there, but I haven't been so involved with that. So I will get involved with that climate emergency group. Thank you. Brilliant. Bobby, don't think. I took the sewing machine and I put the needle on and everything. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> um, I, I uh, Lara, and then I think George has raised a hand. Lara? Hello. Um, yes, I'm um, actually living above the uh, community-owned pub here um, in one of the rooms uh, um, as well as Jules and our brewer, Mark. Um, so yes, I'll be. I'm interested to hear about the um, People's Pub Partnership. I, um, I'll be doing some research with that. Thanks very much. Um, and um, yeah, great, great to be um, joining the team. Thanks very much. Great stuff. Fantastic. I think you sent us your email, didn't you, in a direct message? Yes, I did, cool. yeah. Thanks. Link up bioregionally, folks. That's why we ask people to put their where they are next to their name. Um, George in, in Lempster, George Dice of the old Rainbow Centre team, and uh, Lib Dems, had a yeah. hand up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jules gave a list of priorities he's agreed with his local Conservatives, um, didn't he? He said, oh, we all agree we want to look after this soil and things. And it's much better saying we are the 90% who care about the environment against the 1% of the billionaires, rather than saying we're the 1% like exile, we're the 1% who are fighting the battle, and you 99% who are just, um, you know, aren't good enough. That's, you're not going to win like that. You win by saying, no, we're in the 99%, aren't you? Don't you think? Which is what he's done, which is... Nice, George. Movement, movement, history and remembering, you know, the theme from Occupy, we are the 99%. We are the majority. Let's get organised and let's create the way we will see the way we want to see it. Nice, George. Uh, Joe? 
go. I think Joe with the messages early on no business. Andy, are you are you still with us, Andy? Andy, Andy, okay, Laterambo, Lateram zero. Okay, folks, uh, pipe up any of those if you think. So what's to say, just, you know, save the chat, the three little ducks down the bottom saves the chat somewhere on your computer. There's lots of really good links there. Join the Telegram, uh, post on the Facebook, be an active part of the network, get in touch with us at climateec at gmail.com. That's climate with two E's. Um, if you want to know, there's, there's, we're getting offered buildings around the country. We can help teams set up legal entities and get buildings, uh, help to negotiate meanwhile leases. Let's get these spaces open so that we can get the majority who really care about things but need a space to do something together. Um, check out the Climate Majority Project, uh, check the website out, contact them, get involved, help each other. Um, thank you very much for your time. I'll leave the final, um, final words to uh, my friend uh, Dan, uh, AKA Swampy. Uh, thank you so much for coming, bro, and all your, your you know, relentless action over the years. O over, to, over to Dan for parting message from climate majority <laughs> thanks for that phoenix <laughs> left me i'm not as good a talker as you <laughs> um yeah thanks everyone for uh for coming and listening to um jules saying some good stuff of me rambling and um yeah hopefully i'll see you all at some point uh you know around uh, the place and we'll get uh you know get, get some positive uh stuff going from this Brilliant. All right, guys, have a, have a great evening. Thank you very much for coming. We'll, we'll, we'll see you next week. Um, I think we've got Graham Boyd coming to talk about setting up uh, kind of cooperative uh, legal structures and companies that are more cooperative and better for the environment. And a whole host of speakers linking up after that. Thanks. All right, guys, thank you very much. Take care. Have a great time. Thank you. Thank you. you come on. Thank you. Bye. 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 Cheerio, Poblock. <laughs> Keep networking. Nice. Okay, save the chat. Okay, I'm recording. Uh, Go to the YouTuber that, uh, that uh, especially the